Welcome back. Today, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the repair procedure for a normally open K series um, pneumatic valve assembly. Um, this particular valve is normally open valve, and it's got a catcher tube on the bottom of it, which actually makes it a dump valve assembly as well. Um, anytime you're working on the valve assembly from here up, it's the same whether you're using it whether you have to be using it for a cutting valve or a valve in a uh, block of bleed or things like that. It's all the same valve mechanism. Today's it's a dump valve because it's got a catcher tube on it. But to get into it, we'll zoom down to the vise here. Um, I start by taking the top of the actuator apart. And I securely put it in the vise. You don't have to get it really tight, but you're going to be pulling on some of this. Um, before you loosen your actuator, um, I would recommend taking your spanner wrench and at least loosening the top closure if you're going to do a repair to there. Today I'm going to show you how to get this apart and how to replace the O-rings and inspect the piston and things of that nature. Um, if you're just going to take the actuator off without doing a repair there, you certainly just go here with a strap wrench and take this off as assembly. If you're going to get into it though, I would suggest loosening this at this stage while it's tight. Once you get it loose, then you can leave it there for a moment until you go to the bench. Um, then we're going to take a strap wrench and wrap around the uh, assembly itself. And then you can buckle that over and loosen your entire actuator assembly from your body. Once you get everything loose, I, I do leave it there usually and then go to a bench. We're going to invert this now. Catcher tube onto a nozzle tube. Um, this is a left hand thread. So you're actually going to turn it clockwise to loosen this. Once you get it loose, we'll move down to the 9 16 Of course, it's right hand threads, so you're going to turn it counterclockwise to loosen those. Once you get everything loose, we'll go to the we'll go to the bench and, and take everything the rest of the way apart. I usually start with the actuator, and it's loose, so I'll just unscrew it. Once I get it un unscrewed from there, I'll go ahead and take the top closure out with my spanner wrench. Once I get it back all the way out, I'll take it off and set that to the side. Um, to get the piston out, you can apply air pressure to the bottom, um, or a lot of times I'll take a, a wooden dowel, anything plastic, and I'll just put through where the stem was at and, and go ahead and push the piston out of the top and lay it to the side. I'll take a small pick, or you can use something wooden if you would like to do that. But if you use a pick, just be careful and make sure you don't scratch anything. We're going to discard the O-rings. Once you get the O-rings off of the piston and out of the cylinder bore itself, these items are ready to go to the wash tub, so we'll set those up at the top. Now it comes to taking the rest of it apart. I'll usually go ahead and tighten the gland nut, just finger tight, and then I'll go ahead and take my catcher tube off the end. Once you get your catcher tube out, I use the turret upside down. There's some orifices you can see in the bottom. And dump it out. And I'll lay it to the side. At this point, I'll take the 916th gland nut out of the bottom. And then push your nozzle tube up out of there. 
both these items are ready to go to wash. Now, in the bottom, in the bottom of the body, you'll notice you have the seat for the stem. Um, those things torque it anywhere from 110 to 130 foot pounds, depending on what um, where you're using the valve or what nozzle tubes you have in it. Um, so it's usually pretty tight in there. <clears throat> if it is, you can take your index of the finger or your thumb and push on the stem itself or I just usually turn it upside down and push against the table. When you do that, it'll push the seat away from the bottom of the body. And if it doesn't fall down like this one did, you can reach in with some small needle nose and pull it out. Most of the time it'll fall out like that you can just dump it out. Today we're going to put a kit in so we're going to replace that item. <clears throat> when it comes to pulling the stem and seal and the bass, brass backup rings and stuff, you can use a small wooden dowel or a plastic, uh, plastic rod, either one. Go in from the bottom side up through the bore and push on the stem. You'll see it moved up. And then you can take and push it against the table itself until it comes loose. And you can set that assembly to the side. You're going to replace that as well. Now, at that point, you've got your seal and everything completely out of the body. Um, we're going to go to the sink and the solvent tank. We're going to clean all the old goop and get all the parts cleaned and inspected. And we'll come back. We'll lay them all out and I'll show you how to put everything back together. Okay, we've got all of our parts laid out. We just come back from the solvent tank and the hot water tank. Uh, remember, I wash all my parts in solvent, get all the old goop and grease and stuff off the components, and then I put them in a, a sink with hot soapy water, and it does a really good job getting all that old goop and stuff off your parts and out of the threads. <clears throat> Once I get everything washed, I went through and inspected everything to make sure I don't have any damage or defects in the bore and to the threads and all three pockets and really give it a, a good look over on everything to make sure you don't have any scratches, dings, dents, things like that that would affect coarse seals or O-rings. Once everything's been inspected and it's laid out there, we're going to start to putting everything back together. I usually start by putting my actuator together. Um, this is a normally open valve, remember, so it goes pretty quick. I usually start with my actuator housing. I'll take a little bit of green grease on my index finger, and I try to stay off the threads. I'm just looking to grease the part that the O-rings are going to ride on, and then I'll usually grease the bottom of the pocket just a small amount, and I just put that film in there to help protect this um, from moisture and crud that comes through airlines. Once you get that greased, I set it to the side and I'll put the O-rings and stuff on the piston. I'll put these O-rings on the piston dry to start off with and then I'll grease them once they're on there. To put the O-rings on there, I start them in the groove on one side and just kind of put my thumb on there and roll it around. It rolls those O-rings right into the groove. When you get ready to put the piston in there, you notice one side's flat, one side has a recess with counterbore in it. The counterbore accepts the stem from the bottom of the valve. So of course when you put it in the actuator, you're going to put that side down. Small amount of grease again on my index and thumb, and I just rotate around the piston itself to lubricate those O-rings. Now I find it's, it's easier to put this in here if you actually turn it upside down. I'll use and put my fingers on it like that, turn the actuator upside down, so gently set it in there and then flip it over. When you do, then you can take your two thumbs, stir it in there straight, and push it all the way to the bottom. The next O-ring is actually sealing on the actuator housing to the top closure. It sets in this small lip and that's how it seals the air pocket off. We'll go ahead and put that O-ring in next. There's a small groove right down the bottom. That's where you're going to set the O-ring. And you can just curl it around until it fits into the groove. You don't want to stick it down on top of the piston 
but it goes in the groove just below the threads. Once you have the O-rings and the piston in there, we're going to put the top closure back on. We're going to put a small amount of goop. This is a stainless steel housing, the stainless steel top closure, so you want to make sure and goop those threads. I start with just pick, taking a small amount, putting it around the outside. And then I'll take my index finger and wipe it into those threads. Once I get the goop threaded or the goop put into the threads all the way around it, I'll do the same thing. I kind of turn this upside down and start the threads. And then take it in by hand as far as I can. Then I'll use a spanner wrench into the spanner holes on the top. Get it just nice and snug. And then I'll take and wipe off that outside goop to kind of keep everything clean. Now your actuator is assembled and we'll go to the next step. I start with my valve body. One of the things I'm going to do here is put in the bottom pieces first which correlates to the gland nut and the nozzle tube itself and and the seat that actually goes in the bottom. When I invert this over, you'll notice that there's two different counter boards in the bottom, one for the threaded pocket, then there's a counter board that accepts the large end on the nozzle tube, and then it goes into the bore where your seal is gonna come in from the other side. We're gonna start with putting the seat in the body first take a small amount of goop on my fingers in between my index and my thumb roll the seat completely around you're not looking for a lot of goop but it puts a small film of goop all around the part you take this small end that's going to fit into the bore and I stick it to my finger turn it upside down and push it into the pocket and then turn it over and you'll notice that that seat sets all the way down in the bottom of the pocket with the coned area facing up. That coned area facing up mates against the bottom of this nozzle tube. So we'll set it down. This part you can put in there dry. Set it in the hole. And then we're going to goop the threads on the blend nut. Same thing, go all the way around. Now I take my index finger and run it around and then I start it into the body. And I turn that all the way down in there by hand until I reach the bottom. Now this is a, remember this is a normally open valve assembly. This particular nozzle tube is used for your uh, to accept your cat, your catcher tube for your dump valve assembly. The high pressure water comes out of the bottom and it goes into what is commonly known as the catcher tube. This catcher tube has two impingement discs in the bottom and it's going to have an orifice that sets in the top. The high pressure water comes through the orifice and disperses into this cavity and it comes out this small side hole and goes to drain. So before we install the catcher tube, we're going to slide the orifice inside. The size of the orifice is dictated by the horsepower of your machine. You can check your manual and stuff for the correct orifice size. To set the orifice in there, <clears throat> we're going to use a set of long needle nose pliers to hold the orifice. You'll notice that the inside has a flat surface with a small hole bored in the center. You're going to stick the long end of the orifice into the bore.
Once you set the orifice in there, it should look like that. We're going to stand that up. Again, a small amount of goop on the threads of the nozzle tube. And we'll hold it up. These are left-handed threads, so you're going to turn it counterclockwise to tighten. We're going to run it all the way up until it comes in contact and then stop. At this point, we're going to put our seal assembly together. There's an actual aluminum tool that we use to do this. There's two different sides. This side has a couple counter bores and stuff to stick the parts in to set the distance correctly on the stem. The other side is where you're going to put it to actually slide it into the bore of the body. You take your O-ring, your high pressure seal it goes in first, O-ring down. Brass ring has two different diameters, a large and a small. The small diameter goes towards the high pressure seal, so you're going to stick it in the small step down. The stainless steel backup ring has a small V cut in the top to allow that water to escape at seal failure. You're going to put the V towards the brass. We're going to take just a small amount of white grease on our index fingers and coat the stem. The point in first until it comes in contact with the seal and then we're going to push this against the table. You can push it against your bench or against your table and you push all the way down. You push until the valve stem stops. Once it slides all the way in you can remove this assembly and it actually puts everything into place at the correct distance. At this point we'll use a little bit more white grease and we'll lubricate the seal assembly itself We'll drop it into the threaded side of the seal tool. This is the point where you can hold your valve body upside down and start this in the cavity. You can also, if you were doing this with this mounted on the machine, you can take the seal assembly and start it into the hole and then use the seal tool up on top and screw it all the way in. You're going to screw it all the way down until it stops. You'll know you're far enough when the step on the seal tool is even with the top of the body. If you're pushing it all the way down and it were to, it, it were to stop there, you know you're not seated correctly. You want to take this back out and take a look and see what went wrong. But you definitely want to go until you're all the way down. Once you've seated everything, you can take it back out. And you'll notice that the stem, seat, and the backup rings have been pushed into place at the correct distance. This is a normally open valve, so we don't have to apply air pressure when we're actually putting this together. At this point, we would put a little goop on the male threads and wipe that in with our index finger. Hold your valve, sort it over the and then screw it all the way together. When you get it all the way hand tight, we're going to move to the vise and continue to tighten everything into place. When I go to the vise, I usually stick the valve body in, actuator up first. Um, there's not really, on a normally open valve, you can either tighten the bottom first or the top. It really makes no difference because you don't need air to bring that spring pressure off. So we're going to screw this all the way down by hand until it touches. You're going to back it off about a quarter of a turn and slap it shut. Um, a lot of people try to tighten these things too tight. And if you'll just back it off, slap it shut like that, I can assure you it's tight. To tighten our top closure into our actuator housing at this point you're just going to go down until it's seated all the way and just nice and snug and that's it
At this point, I'm going to invert the valve upside down and tighten the bottom pieces. This 916 gland nut, the torque rating is in your manual. Please refer to that. Depending on the uh, what this valve is used for, it does change the torque rating on this. This particular valve is going to tighten or torque at 110 foot-pounds. I usually stabilize the assembly with my left hand until I hear the snap. Now we're going to tighten the catcher tube assembly onto the nozzle tube. Remember, there's an orifice in there. There is a specific, a specific torque rating on this. Uh, today I'm using a crow's foot. This particular one will uh, tighten at 10 foot-pounds. You can check your manual for yours if you're using an abrasive body or some other type of reason for using this normally open valve. You would want to check your manual for any type of torque rating on whatever orifice you have. Ten pounds isn't much, so you probably didn't hear much snap, but we're only going to ten pounds. After you've got everything tightened and torqued into place, your valve's ready to be put back on your machine and your repair is complete. Thank you for watching.